The NHL9 from Noctua is a really popular small form factor CPU cooler, but is it actually any good? Let's find out. What's up everyone, Eric here and welcome to Hardware for Gamers. For those of you who are new to the channel, I review and test PC cases, CPU coolers, PC case fans, and video cards. I bought this cooler myself, so if you end up liking this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel because it does help a lot. I will have timestamps in the description so you can jump to whatever interests you, but I do recommend you watch the whole review. Okay, I'll start the overview with a look at the L9 series or the L9 lineup. The Noctua NHL9 has many different SKUs. There is the NHL9i set of SKUs and the NHL9a set of SKUs. I is for Intel and A is for AMD. And then depending on what socket you're wanting to use, things break down from there. So there's the LGA 1200 and 1150s or the LGA 1700. That's not an and or between the 1200 and 1700, that's a 1200 or 1700. Then for AMD, it's AM4 or AM5. What I have and have tested is the NHL9A AM4. Now all of these sell for 45 USD on amazon.com or 55 USD for the Chroma Max Black versions. Okay, with that done, let's go over what you get in the box. There is the heatsink and fan, of course, the mounting hardware for AM4, what they call a low noise adapter, a small tube of thermal compound, and screws for an optional 25 millimeter fan that is sold separately. Okay, taking a closer look at the heatsink, the L9 is a low profile cooler with two six millimeter heat pipes, both the heat pipes and base plate are copper, while the fins are aluminum, but the whole cooler has been nickel plated. Now for the fan, the model is an NFA9X14 PWM. So this is a slim fan that's only 14 millimeters. It has a max rated RPM of 2500, a minimum rated RPM of 500. There are nine blades. The bearing type is Noctua's SSO2 bearing, so that's the self-stabilizing oil pressure bearing, and it has a four-pin PWM fan connector. The dimensions of the L9A with the fan attached is 114 millimeters high by 92 millimeters wide by 37 millimeters deep. So based off these dimensions, I'm pretty confident in saying there will be no RAM clearance issues. For socket compatibility, as I went over before, this will depend on which version you bought. This version, the L9A AM4, is compatible with only AM4 out of the box. You can now get the AMD AM5 mounting kit. That makes the L9i and the L9A compatible with AM5. Okay, moving on to how to install the CPU cooler. I will be installing the NHL9A, of course, onto an AM4 motherboard. I'm not sure how different installing the NHL9i is. So if you have either of the Intel models or even the AM5 model, you should definitely check out Noctua's installation manuals rather than just following what I have blindly, because I really don't know. Now, as always, before you start, you should have a flat, clean, and sturdy surface. You should also have a mat, preferably an anti-static mat, but of course, in a pinch, you can always use the box that your motherboard came in. You will need a PH2 screwdriver, some isopropyl alcohol, and something to wipe down the CPU's IHS with. If you haven't already, you need to start by removing the default AMD mounting hardware. Once you're done, move it all off to the side. Now it's time to wipe off the CPU's IHS with the isopropyl alcohol and to remove the sticker from the bottom of the cool plate. With the sticker now removed and everything clean, apply the provided or your own thermal compound to the CPU's IHS. Once you have, place the heatsink cold plate down onto the CPU's IHS, making sure to align the screw threads on the mounting bars to the holes on the motherboard. After that, the motherboard needs to be flipped, making sure as you flip the motherboard, the screw threads on the mounting bars stay aligned to the holes on the motherboard. Then place the back plate on the motherboard, 
The insulated side of the back plate needs to be facing the motherboard. And again, making sure all the holes are aligned. Then put the screws through the holes on the back plate, tightening the screws in a cross diagonal pattern. Do not over tighten the screws. Once all the screws are tight, flip the motherboard once again so that we can plug in the fans PWM connector into the motherboard. And that's the installation. Now, was that quick? Yes. But was it easy? Not really. Okay, now that we know how to install the CPU cooler, let's go over the fans PWM range. So at 100% PWM, the motherboard is showing the RPM at 2700-ish, and that had the DBA at 38.3. When I dropped the PWM down to zero, the fan stopped spinning, so it had an RPM of zero. The fan kicked on at 10% PWM, but the motherboard is still showing the RPM at zero, so I used my tachometer to get the RPM, and the RPM was around 250-ish. And that had the DBA at or below my noise floor of 32. So this fan does have a very good RPM range. And with that all done, on to the temperature testing. Now, if you haven't seen my CPU cooler testing methodology video, I strongly suggest you do. It's where I go over the how and what of my CPU cooler testing. I'll have a card above, and I'll also have it linked down in the description. The L9A in the 35 DBA noise equalized 67 watt test is at the bottom of the chart with an average CPU temperature of 73.7 Celsius. Then at full speed, the L9A had a temperature of 72.1 Celsius, which does have it beating the Wraith Stealth cooler. Now for the 87 watt tests, with the L9A noise equalized to 35 dBA, the average CPU temperature was at 94.7 Celsius. I only ran one test at 35 dBA because 94.7 Celsius is really hot and I don't want to burn out my test system. It didn't thermally throttle in the one test I ran, but if I ran the four tests I normally do, it may have. So something to keep in mind. Then when I let the fan run at full speed, the average CP temperature was 91.1 C. So yes, the L9A did lose to the Wraith Spire in the 67 watt tests but then managed to beat it in the 87 watt tests. So it does seem that the copper slug from the Wraith Spire can pull the heat out of the IHS faster, but then has less overall heat capacity than the L9A. Now, all in all, that's not by much because they did have very similar temperatures in these tests. So what do I think of the Noctua NH-L9A? I think it's definitely overpriced for the thermal performance you get. Now, yes, Noctua does give you a six-year warranty, and that's kind of what you're paying for. But even so, I can't recommend it because if you can get an, a Thermalrite AXP90 X53 or X47 for $12 to $17 less than this thing, like it just doesn't make sense to me. Yes, the 53 and 47 is the height of those coolers, so they are bigger coolers. And that's why it makes sense that you'll get better cooling performance from them, as I show in my charts. But the big thing is, they're a fair bit less money. So you'll get better cooling performance for less money, and most ITX cases aren't so tight that they won't allow for an extra 10 to 15 millimeters in CPU cooler height. And I'm sure you might be able to list off a few cases that would have clearance issues, but by that point, you're really just being an Octal fanboy, aren't you? And I guess that's all I have for this one. So if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're still watching and you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you get notified whenever I drop a new video. There's also the HFG Discord server. It is free to join. All you need to do is agree to the server rules, and then you'll get to see all of my charts. A link is in the description. If you want to support the channel directly, there is Patreon. A link again is in the description. You may want to check out this video here. And as always, thank you very much for watching and see you next time.